Hey guys, Bill Yaley heading on down to the Mad Scientist Lab. I've been playing around with uh, building a tube amp, building it in discrete chunks where I have like different gain stages. I've got like tone blocks in there and it's been pretty enlightening so far. I've done a few things to improve it, like I've added some of the metal film to, to shield it. Here it is. Uh, so I've shielded the cigar box. You can see a little bit of uh, the metal tape there reflecting. I've also added the shield on the uh, the tube itself. It improves the gain and it also adds some additional shielding so it's even more quiet. So all of that's sounding really good right now. I want to tell you guys about something else. The schematic for the dual triode test harness came from me looking at a bunch of schematics and averaging a bunch of things out and then coming up with a bunch of ways that I could adjust to get pretty much any combination I could think of. But there's another circuit that I also saw. This tube amp pre-gain section or this topology uh, that was in a handful of amps. Uh, namely the like Vox Top Boost, the Marshall 50 Watt, the JCM 800, and the Fender Baseman 5F6-A. So we've got a signal coming in here on the grid. Uh, it comes off the anode directly into the grid of the second stage or the second half of the dual triode. Uh, but then instead of taking the the signal off of the anode up here or off the plate, it comes off of the cathode. In my research, I found out that sometimes this is called a cathode follower or it's called a mu multiplier because the mu or amplification factor is multiplied across this. So what we're going to do now is build a tube test harness uh, for that schematic. We'll see how that goes. I have just completed building a test harness for this second vacuum tube test harness. So uh, I did make one mistake. I put this uh, switch for the capacitor in upside down. So uh, on is down and off is up. So let's crack this open. Starting with the power supply. Again, I'm using a 12 volt AC power adapter, and that's coming in here through a twisted pair. And that's going to a transformer uh, where I've got uh, 12 volt leads on the outside. Uh, it's tapped in the middle, so that's where I'm getting my 6 volt filament voltage. Uh, or the 12 if I take it from the two outside. This uh, raises the voltage back up to 120 volts AC and then that goes to power supply section. The uh, 120 AC goes through four diodes for a full wave rectifier and I've got that going to uh, this beefy electrolytic capacitor. This is a 150 microfarad rated for 400 volts. Uh, I've got it going through this 100 ohm uh, resistor into another electrolytic capacitor. You, let's see, the positive is going off of here and it's being fed to these two variable plate resistors. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I have these labeled R1 and R3, R0 and R2 are there. Well, let's do the middle R0, R1, R2, and R3. So that's what those potentiometers are for there. 0, 1, 2, and 3. These set voltages for the plate for R3 here sets it for the plate of the second side. This one sets it for the first side. We've got a switch here that 
toggles back and forth between the 6 volt AC, 12 volt AC filament voltage, uh, the input jack here, the cathode on this first side runs over here to R0 and to this cluster of switchable capacitors. And lastly, let's see, this R2 variable resistor goes to the cathode here on the second side. So all in all, it's a fairly simple circuit. There's a lot of wires. I tried to do everything in twisted pairs to keep the noise to a minimum. Now, let's uh, hook it up to an amp and see what it sounds like. All right, we're over here at the test amp. Got my double-headed uh, 20 watt here. I've got uh, one of my double clone uh, tone stacks and I've got the cathode follower test harness here. So let's get the amp warming up. All right, so what's happening is I've got the guitar going into here. Uh, this, the signal is coming out um, and going through the tone stack. This has a slight DC uh, value going into it, so to prevent that from front-loading the amp DC, I'm going to run it through here because there's capacitors that block all of that DC voltage. <laughs> at the 12 o'clock position. It has a really good sound and it's also very very quiet even with the volume up all the way like 75 percent of the way up let's try the jazz setting here some fun with the capacitor here. I've got the bottom two on. So this is set on about 1.2 microfarad. Let's just turn them all on. because I'm just using the microphone on the video camera. Um, but raising the capacitance here kind of boosts the bottom end. Take off some of those. This one's a little bit thinner. Take off another two. 
little bit more thin. Anyway, I tend to like this 1.2 setting. <laughs> This, this is a, a good first gain stage to feed into the Q. So puts a little bit of a drive through here and then it can go on to another gain stage and boost the level back up to drive the power amp section. So another success I would say. Much more happy with the noise level on this one than I am on the first one that I made. So, I don't know. I might have to go back and uh, make some changes. But the important thing is, is I've got plenty of things to play around with now. With this tube amp test harness, I've got the one that I made before. I've got a number of tone stacks or tone blocks that I can use. I have the makings of, a, uh, of an extremely versatile tube amp experimental test harness. So, we'll see what we come up with next. All right, appreciate you guys checking in. Bill Gailey and the Mad Scientist Lab, checking out. See you guys later.